Okay. Kristen, could you tell um, Dr. Hill that we're going to start anesthesia right now? not innervated, so there's no pain receptors in the bone, it's just soft tissue. So. Mm -hmm. down again, please. The numbers. There you go. That's okay. Cut. Yeah. Just stay there. And can you tell Dr. Engel that the, the measurements are um, 12.5, 2 millimeters from the nerve, and the width is 7.2? 12.5. 7.2. Sound? They want sound as well. Okay, put some sound in. Go ahead. Do you want to tell them the measurements through that? I'll tell them, yeah, that's okay. fine. Tell me when the sound's in. Let us know. So what we have here, can everybody hear me okay? Just give me a clap if you can hear me. Clap if you can hear me. All right, thank you. 
So uh, we, as we did yesterday, we took an um, uh, ICAD CT, and uh, we, we talked about this yesterday, about how it allows us to see the position uh, without distortion um, in three dimensions. We have a, a schematic of the bone area, uh, which allows us really to see any defects that may be. The, I don't know if you can see it real well, but there's a uh, horizontal blue line at about the apices of the roots. And that is the cross section on this upper left uh, side. You can see just the tips of the, of the roots. Again, we reviewed this uh, with your cases for, uh, for today. Um, we have two millimeter slices of the CT and we have three lines. The middle line is indicated by this highlighted box in blue. And we did a measurement staying about two millimeters from the, from the uh, metal nerve or metal foramen. The foramen's just a, a little bit further forward, uh, so we don't, we're not really concerned with that. And the measurements here are 12.5 in vertical height, and the width is 7.2. So I feel very comfortable, very confident that we'll be able to place an implant. And Dr. Engel can discuss, well, what size implant are we going to be prepared to place? He told you yesterday it's very important that you have a variety of sizes for each surgery. So uh, in this situation, I'm going to place a 4.1 by 11 uh, millimeter length implant. But I have to have a, small, a size smaller and a size bigger, uh, depending on the situation. And maybe even a size shorter. Um, um, in case we run into any issues that um, we're not predicting ahead of time. Go ahead and uh, go on the DEXIS. Um, and I don't know if Dr. Engel had a chance to, to discuss this with you, but with the DEXIS uh, system, with the digital x-rays, we're actually able to measure the diameter of this ball radiographically. What? Um, Dr. Engel has had a chance okay. to talk. All right, well, let me, let me just get it on the video then. So we have a five millimeter ball, and then we just measure from the crest to the apices of the adjacent teeth, roughly. Uh, we're, we're very safe, and here we have 10.2 millimeters. Go ahead and pan over. The measurement gives us 10.2 of the red line. So we know that we're very safe, very comfortable, uh, shouldn't be a, a difficult surgery uh, whatsoever. We went ahead and uh, anesthetized the patient. We used uh, an infiltration of septicane. Uh, we are not blocking. You will not, not be blocking your patient, so it's very comfortable uh, for her. And we'll do a little interview after we're finished. Uh, you can tell us what it's like to go through this procedure. Um, and you saw me, I kind of walked along the ridge um, to, to really, uh, what we're trying to do is anesthetize the soft tissue. Bone is not innervated. There's no pain receptors in bone. We have to watch the anatomy um, of nerves running through bone. This will be a very comfortable procedure for our patient. We also, you can come over here and um, you can go ahead and retract. And show the ridge. We did a, um, a, a health history on our patient. And um, uh, Nan uh, is hypothyroid. She does suffer from migraines, and um, she's vitamin D3 deficient. She's a little anemic, but other than that, no, uh, no contraindications to her implant dentistry. She's not allergic to any medications. Um, she has a few cups of coffee, as most of us do a day, but she is not a cigarette smoker, and I would predict that um, this will go very smoothly and, and very easily. So, are you ready to begin? I am. Okay. Belinda, if you can come over here, and um, you can just show the, um, the hand piece here. So we preset our, our Cavo um, Cybron hand piece. We talked about this yesterday in, in great, great detail. Um, we're going to be drilling at 1,000 RPMs. When we're drilling into bone, the RPMs are what, what's important, not the Newton centimeter. So we are going to be drilling at about 1,000 RPMs with copious amounts of water. We want to cool the area as much as possible. When we're placing the implant or tapping, we're going to change our setting. And I'll do that right now. And we preset our number two setting to 25 Newton centimeters. In this situation, the RPMs isn't as, as important. Uh, and the, the tapping or the placement of the implant will stop at 25 newton centimeters. 
If we want to go back to 1, we go through the entire system, and we're back to number 1, and we're ready to go. And Belinda, if you could scan just one more thing I want to show. And our study models that we, we uh, showed you yesterday, too, are very, very important diagnostically. Uh, Dr. Engel asked me to show you the interocclusal space. Uh, we can measure, if you have that ruler there. We can do a lot of diagnosing ahead of time. We can determine the, the um, mesial distal width. We can determine how tall our crown is going to be by simply measuring. And we can measure the width. Now, the width is a little tricky because we're look, really looking at soft tissue, not at bone. But do we have calipers here or no? That's okay. You do have them available? Yeah. Do you have them out or no? Okay. No, that won't help. So anyway, so we'll look at that, and we can take calibers to actually measure the, um, the bone height for those of you who are not going to do a CT scan ahead of time. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, now I'm recording. This is a, a surgically clean procedure. It's not a sterile procedure. Um, we are going to give the patient antibiotic postoperatively that we talked about yesterday in detail. We'll also give a pain medication. Uh, but as I advised the patient earlier, she'll probably do just fine with uh, extra strength Tylenol and, and not need a narcotic. But everybody's a little bit different. So if you remember from yesterday in great detail, we start with the liniment burr or liniment drill, which is very, very sharp. And you can see the markings, but this is not critical. The markings are not critical in this drill. What we're going to be doing is placing the implant, uh, I'm sorry, placing the liniment burr uh, into the bone just to stabilize it. We don't have to go very deep. What, you can measure the tissue? Okay. Yeah. Back off a little bit and we'll measure the tissue with a perioprobe. The patient's numb. And what I'm doing is just sounding the bone. And it's pretty thin in this area maybe one, maybe one and a half millimeters. And I'm just going all the way to bone. And the perio probe can also be used to determine exactly where we want to place that implant in the center. We want to be two millimeters from the adjacent teeth. millimeters of um, mesial distal width there. Now we could do a little disking uh, of the adjacent teeth also to give us a little more room. Uh, and you saw in the radiograph uh, earlier that the roots are, are a little bit divergent there, so we're not really concerned. So we're going to take our Lindemann burr and we're going to try to determine ideal position. If you could turn to me just a little bit and chin down a little bit. That's perfect. So what I'm looking at is the center of the ridge. That look good, Sherry? Yeah. And just deep enough to hold that burr in place. I'm going to put a pin in your mouth so you won't be able to close completely okay. and the girls are going to take a quick x-ray. So okay. if you want to get a good swallow, relax your jaw for a second okay. and then we'll take this right out. So we'll simply put that back in. It's stable. It's not going to fall out. Go ahead and take the radiograph. All right, go ahead and um, scan over to there. Now, let's look at this uh, very carefully, and, and, and Todd, you can discuss this also. Um, it looked like I was in pretty good position, but I think I want to go a little bit distal 
and a little bit um, mesial uh, with the burr, meaning the point should go a little bit, um, uh, be distally verted. So we're going to do it one more time. We just have a small opening there. Let's see if we can get it in perfect position. So do we think we're a little bit better there? Can I have a, a clap if we think we're better? Okay. Good for you. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just showing off. That's all. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we know that our, our tissue, or we think our tissue, is about a um, millimeter and a half, and we're going to place an 11 millimeter implant. So I'm going to, to actually uh, drill down with our 2.2 drill to about 12. Let's, let's start there and see where we are. And remember the markings are 7, 9, 11, 13. So we're going to go right in the middle of the second black line. You can see that real well there. Yeah, it's a little bit easier to say. See there. Middle of the second uh, thick black line. And we'll see where we are from there. Now, I really do rely on, on Sherry here to, to help me with the angulation. As I mentioned yesterday, it's very easy. You think you're right on, and they're at 9 o'clock. They're seeing things a little bit differently than, uh, than I am at 11 o'clock. We'll use some pumping motion. The bone is, is relatively soft in that area. It's really, it's really cutting nicely. And let's take another radiograph and see where we are.
looks great. The only thing is that um, what I was seeing is your little external water and it flows in the hand. From the camera side, you can see it's created by cuspid. So you're at 11 and it stops you. Right, no, no. So you yeah. the extension to go one more million. Yeah, 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 no. That's, okay. what I, that's what I wanted to show. Yeah, exactly. All right, as Dr. Engel was saying, um, and let's just let's demonstrate this again because I think this is a, a good learning thing. We have our burr on our handpiece, and as I'm going into place, I'm hitting the handpiece. The, the water thing is actually hitting. I can't go any deeper with this, okay? Um, that's what he was alluding to. And we took a measurement. And Belinda, can you go back to the x-ray for a second? If you look at the x-ray, um, we're at 7, 9, 11. So we have a ways to go yet, and we're way away from the apices of the teeth. So we're going to use what's called a, a drill extension. Let's put it on there. This is a drill extension, so it'll give me a little more room, and the the, uh, the burr or the drill actually snaps into that. So let's go a little bit deeper. So I was able to get a little bit deeper with that drill extension. Go ahead. Okay, so we were able to go a little deeper. We're still short of the apices of the teeth, 7, 9, 11, 13. I think we could even go a little bit longer, and I think we'll put a, um, a longer implant in there. Again, that's why it's so imperative that you have the right number of implants and the right type for different situations. So I'm going to go a little bit, little bit deeper there. demonstrate this. Uh, Todd, I'm, I'm sure you're explaining this. So when we're making our measurements, what I'm looking at is soft tissue, and you can kind of see the shadow, maybe not that well, I can see it on the computer screen better. Um, 7, 9, 11 is just slightly below the crest, and 13 is right about the tissue level, uh, and we said about 12, 12 and a half. So when we do our tissue punch, we're going to be able to measure that uh, even, even um, a little bit closer. But I'm going to go a little, just a tiny little bit deeper. Let's 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to punch the tissue. This is going to be a flapless procedure, and you can see the blade on the extension. Pinch it down a little bit. Okay, and I see my osteotomy opening, and I'm just going to simply go into the tissue, to bone. Circular motion. We have a little tissue plug there. And then we'll go back to the mouth and get a mirror. Stay there, and I'll move to you. Okay. Just turn a little bit. There we go. And can you get a little closer to that window? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll, let, let me do it first. Mm -hmm. And uh, let it move. But you can, you can see the, the opening. And then what I like to do is I like to take my perio probe and just measure again. And indeed, it's about one and a half, one and a half millimeters. We're going to take our 3.3 .3 diameter drill. Same markings. And we'll come to sight. And again, my staff is guiding me and helping me a little bit. Very good. Stop and we'll take another x ray. Okay, are you ready? Go. Go, please. So let's look at what we have here. Pointer, please. All right, so 7, 9, 11, 
13, here's the soft tissue. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change gears just a little bit, and I'm going to put a 3.3 uh, diameter implant. Um, we're a little bit close to the, to the adjacent teeth, so we're going to, to change our mind from our initial diagnosis, and I'm going to place a 3.3 by 11 Cybron XRT implant. So I'm done drilling at this point, now it's just a matter of placing the implant. Do you have it? Yeah. Okay, Belinda, come on over here. Well, um, Kristen? Here, I need you to hold this. So to show the camera. Just hold it right here. Kristen's showing you the, um, the boxing, the packaging. And just show me that's the outside. 3.3 by 11, and go ahead and open that. Show them that and then flip it, flip it. And again, you have the 3.3 uh, by 11. And then there's little um, chart type tags in there if you can show them that too, Kristen. And these are little records that you can put in your in your patient records, your chart, or or some kind of a book that uh, to know what the lot number and, and the the type of implant that was placed in the individual situation. So we open the packaging, and again, you can see clearly, if it was upside down, 3.3 by 11. We have sterile packaging. We showed you this yesterday. And you simply open it. And there's our implant. Can you get a close-up of the inside of the implant? And this is a hex implant. And then the healing screw, or cover screw, cover screw, comes with, this, with the system. Just stay right there for a bit, okay? Now, in your surgical kit, in your surgical kit, we have different sizes of hex drivers for the for the implants. I'll try to put it in my hand here. One is short and one is long, and we're probably going to have to use the long one because that that tooth was in the way. But I won't need the, the drill extension in that situation. Come down, please, Blinda. Okay. So we have our drill extension. We reset the handpiece. There's no water, and we're going to put this in at 25 newton centimeters. Now this bone was relatively soft, so we're going to be very careful in the placement of the implant with the handpiece. We're going to be watching the position. So let me go ahead and rotate this a little bit. You can see. Just stay there, Belinda. You can see how slow that's going. Put the side chin down a little bit again. Beautiful. And we're going to go to our osteotomy site. Okay, and it stopped there. 
Okay, let's get the mirror again. And as we demonstrated yesterday, That we are not there. There we go. Suction of lingual cleavage. We are not to depth. We're at about the soft tissue level. So now we're going to hand torque that the rest of the way. And again, we have a long and a short hand torque wrench. We'll use the long one because of the position of the teeth. Don't stay on there. And we have our torque wrench. The writing is facing towards you. Back off just a little bit, Belinda, please. There you go. Perfect. We have the little spring, the arrow is pointing towards me. You can see the arrow right up there. And this is tight. It'll simply snap into position. All right, now we'll go back to the patient. And we're going to start ratcheting. Now what I'm watching for is that we know we have about a millimeter and a half. And if you're not sure, let's stop. Let's look where we are. Can we go a little bit deeper? and go a little bit deeper. And I'm just visualizing it at this point. And then we'll stop and take an x-ray and we'll double check it. I'm starting to feel a little resistance. And just a little bit more I can see. You can focus up on the, my finger and that little ball. There you go. And we're getting it right to about 25. So let's stop and take an x-ray. Let's see where we are. We're almost finished. Okay. Okay, so I was very conservative here. As I mentioned, I could feel that the bone was soft. We got it almost to 25 newton centimeters in torque. We put in an 11 by 3.3, so we have plenty of distance between the adjacent teeth. We're way away from the apices of the adjacent teeth. We're nowhere near a nerve. Very safe, very comfortable procedure and we're at the crest of the bone. So I'd like an applause if you think this is okay. Louder. So now the determination uh, that we have to make is uh, what do we put? Do we place a cover screw or do we put a, um, a healing abutment in position? I didn't quite torque it to 25. It was a little bit short of 25 
And so I'm going to place a uh, cover screw in this situation. Uh, I'll feel more comfortable with it, and uh, because of the quality of the bone and the extraction site, I think it's uh, a much better choice. If we're 25 newton centimeters or more, then I feel very comfortable putting a, um, a healing abutment in position. Okay, go back on the gown. So we, the cover screw comes with the system. Not all systems have that. And you're simply putting your hex driver in and unthreading it. It's held into position pretty tightly. But be careful with these parts because sometimes things can wear and it's very easy for it to fall out and um, go on the floor or go into the patient's mouth. So we'll go to site. And I'm just hand tightening. I'll use my left hand because I can. Mm -hmm. I'm just hand tightening it. And I'll go back to my torque wrench. Let me back off just a little. Linda. Yep. That won't work. Right, 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 right. Okay. So we hand tightened it in the position. And let's see if you can get a real nice close up of that as close as you can get. Linda. Let's see. Kristen, get the other light. Bring it down a little bit here if you can. There we go. That's okay. Just turn that one off. Okay. Just trying to see if we can get a good shot of that. And you can see the implant in position. So let's get our final x-ray. And we'll go back to the x-ray. And you can see the implant and the cover screw in position. Nice case. Now, come on back to me, Belinda. And then we'll go back to the x-ray. Dr. Kim, can you just stop for a second so we can talk? Go back to the x-ray then. Stop taping to show it on the. It'll show on there.
Now, um, yesterday we talked about uh, post-operative, and there's not a lot of complications in a case like this. It's pretty clean. The only thing we really did is we cut the tissue a little bit, um, which really is not going to, um, to bother her too much. Extra strength Tylenol should be fine. The antibiotic is more precautionary than anything else. We just don't know what's floating around in the air today. Uh, Dr. Engel mentioned that he uses a Medrol dose pack. I'm not a, a the patients take enough pills. Um, so I like uh, injecting uh, to the site, just infiltrating dexamethasone phosphate. You can get that from Shine. It's four milligrams per cc. And I'll simply infiltrate a cc into the site and um, massage the area. And that will eliminate any swelling uh, whatsoever. And if you can come back on me. So the surgery went very well. A couple things um, were a little bit uh, different than I didn't expect and what you have to expect. Um, I thought we would put a little bit wider implant in there, but I felt comfortable putting a 3.3 for a, for a bicuspid tooth. Um, the bone was not as dense as I would have expected in the mandible. Um, and, and that's just a matter of touch and feel. You saw the burrs that you're pumping, and that's what, what Dr. Engel was mentioning several times yesterday. It's important that you not be overly aggressive baby the bone, be very delicate to the bone, and the bone will treat you very, very nicely. Um, if, if we don't mind, if, if you want to give us some comments, you can back up a little more. I'm going to set our patients up, our patient up. You can just talk to the camera if you don't mind. So I, I know uh, this is a little nerve-wracking, and we just really just met um, about a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, were you um, nervous before you came in? I was. You talked to the camera. I was somewhat nervous. Um, a little appreh apprehension, but not too terribly. Um, most of my questions were addressed in the previous uh, appointment, so it, I thought it went quite smoothly. So now that you've gone through the procedure, how would you describe it? Was it easier than you thought? Harder than you thought? I would say much easier than I thought. Yes. Yes. Not, not bad at all. Not bad at all. No. Pain-free. Pain-free. That's what yes. we wanted to hear. Well, thank you again for your time, and I appreciate it. And the, the girls will, will get everything cleaned up and give you directions. I'll give you a call later on tonight make sure you're doing okay. All right. Okay, thank I'll you. talk to you later. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. Thanks.